Hello guys, I am Christine Joy Murillo and I am going to discuss about determinants. So what is a determinant? When we say determinant, it is a number, a scalar quantity that is related with square matrix. So therefore, in this topic, we will be only dealing with square matrix in solving for the determinant. As we can see, the diagonal here is called the leading or principal diagonal. And the elements involved in principal diagonal are called the leading terms. To further understand it, let's have an example. So let us evaluate the determinant of order 3. So bakit siya order 3? Because it is a 3 by 3 matrix. First, let us copy the first column and the second column. And we start tayo dito sa principal diagonal. So 1 times 2 times 5 plus 1 times 4 times 2 plus 1 times 3 times 3. Next, let us solve for the second three terms. And take note that the second three terms are all negative. And we start tayo dito sa last element sa first column. So, minus 2 times 2 times 1, minus 3 times 4 times 1, minus 5 times 3 times 1. So, simplifying this, we will get negative 4. And that is the value of our determinant. Let us discuss about theorems of determinants of any order. So, theorem number 1, it simply states that we can already determine how many terms we will have just by simply using the n factorial. So for example, if we're dealing with order 2, so 2 factorial simply equal to 2. So we will have 2 terms. If order 3 naman, 3 factorial simply equal to 6. So we will have 6 terms. So let us go back to previous example. So previous example natin ay order 3 siya. So therefore, 3 factorial is equal to 6. We have 6 terms. And tama nga yun kasi 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 terms lang ang meron tayo dito. Theorem number 2. If all of the rows and column are interchanged, the value of determinant will still be the same. So for example, as we can see, yung element dito sa first row ay nalipat sa first column. And yung elements dito sa second row ay nalipat sa second column. So if we solve for its determinant, we will still get the same result. A main idea sa theorem number 2 is pinagpalit lahat ng rows and column. So theorem number 3 is if any two rows or column are interchanged, the sign of the determinant will change. For example, as we can see, the elements of first row are nalipat sa second row. And the elements of second row are nalipat sa first row. So if we solve for the determinant dito sa left, we will get negative 101. And dito naman sa right, we will get positive 101. So the main idea here is number three is we will get same magnitude and determinant but different yung sign. Theorem number four is if all of the elements in any row or column are zero, the value of determinant is zero. For example, as we can see, lahat ng elements sa second column ay zero. So therefore, if we solve with its determinant, we will get zero. So it doesn't matter kung yung first row or third row ay lahat may zero. Basta sa row or column na yun, lahat ng elements niya ay zero. So let us prove this. If we solve it manually, we will get this result. As we can see, each term ay may zero. So di ba, any number multiplied by zero is simply equal to zero. So simplifying this, we will get t determinant equal to zero. Theorem number five. If any two rows or column have the same or proportion elements, the value of determinant will be zero. 
So, for example, as we can see, the first column and the third column have identical elements, same sila. So, therefore, yung determinant natin is equal to zero. The next, makikita natin dito yung second column and third column are proportion. So, bakit siya naging proportion? The common factor here sa third column is 2. And if we divide 8 sa 2, it is equal to 4. And 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. And 2 divided by 1 is equal to 1. And if we solve this, the value of determinant will be 0. So theorem number 6. If we have an integer k and we multiply natin siya sa any row or column, the determinant niya is equal to k times its original determinant. So for example, the value of k here is 3 and we multiply siya sa second row. Therefore, yung determinant is equal to 225. And it is also equal dito. Sa 3 times sa original determinant niya. Yung original determinant is 75. So 75 times 3 is equal to 225. And that is the main idea sa theorem number 6. Next is, let us discuss about minors and cofactors. So when we say minor, it is a square matrix that is formed by excluding or deleting the row and column kung saan nalolocate yung reference element natin. So here are some examples of minor ng ating matrix dito. So let us discuss how to get these minors. First, let us determine the minor of the element A12. And that is located dito sa first row, second column. So therefore, if we eliminate the first row, second column, the remaining elements will become its minor. Next, let us get the minor of the element A13. And that is located dito sa first row, third column. And we eliminate natin yon. So the remaining elements will be its minor. That is basically how you get the minor of an element. Next is cofactor. So when we say cofactor, it is a signed minor. So bakit siya naging signed minor? Because of this negative 1 raised to i plus j. Ito yung nagsasabi ko ano yung magiging sign ng minor natin. So the i here stands for the row and j is for the column. So the whole equation is simply the cofactor. So let us discuss how to get the cofactor of an element. So let us get the cofactor of element A31. And that is located dito sa third row, first column. So we exclude natin yung third row, first column. And we simply write negative 1 raised to 3 plus 1. So kaya siya 3 kasi sa third row and 1 kasi sa first column siya located. And the remaining element will be its minor. Rewriting this equation, it will become like this. Kaya siya naging positive 1 kasi negative 1 raised to 3 plus 1 is simply equal to 1. So simplifying this, we will get 21. And that is the cofactor of the element A31. So let's discuss another method of solving for the determinant. And that is the expansion of determinants by minors. So in this method, dito na natin maa-apply yung knowledge natin about minors and cofactors. So basically, we will choose a reference row or column and we will expand it. So we will get the algebraic sum of the products of elements multiplied by its cofactor. So for example, yung reference natin dito is yung first row. So ito yung expand natin para makuha yung determinant. So A11 times sa kanyang cofactor plus A12 times sa kanyang cofactor plus A13 times sa kanyang cofactor. 
And yung magiging answer dito ay yung determinant natin, yung sum nila. So instead of using negative 1 raised to i plus k, we can just simply create a checkboard. For example, if we have order 3, yung checkboard natin magiging ganito. Our reference here is the first element sa first row, first column. That is always positive. And alternating signs na sila. Positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive. So, if we, if we have order 4 naman, ganun pa rin yung approach niya, nadagdagan lang yung row and column. Positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive. So, let us have an example to further understand it. So, let us evaluate the determinant using cofactor. So, ang tip ko dito is, magpipili tayo ng reference row or column, piliin natin yung may madami zero para mas maikli yung solution natin. So, in this case, ang napili ko is yung first row. And let us create a checkboard as our guide. Kung ano yung magiging sign each term. So, let's start. Dito sa 5, eliminate natin yung first row, first column. So, yung matitira ay yung minor niya. Minus, kaya siya negative based on our checkboard kasi located siya sa second column, first row. So, eliminate natin yung first row, second column. And yung matitira dito, ayun yung minor niya. Plus, eliminate natin to first row, third column naman. Ang matitira niya ay yung minor niya. Minus, let us eliminate again the first row and fourth column naman. And yung matitira ay yung minor niya. As we can see, the second term and the fourth term are multiplied by zero. Therefore, makakancel sila. So simplifying this, we will get this result. Bali, two terms na lang. And as we can see, this is a 3 by 3 matrix. So we will expand it again. So ito muna tayo sa first term. So, ang reference dito is yung second row. Bakit? Kasi mas madami siyang zero. So, let's start. So, zero, eliminate natin yung second row, first column. So, that will be its minor, yung matitirang elements. So, kaya siya minus kasi based on our checkboard, yung element located dito sa second row, first column ay negative. So, plus... Eliminate again natin yung second row and second column naman. And yung matitirang element sa yung minor niya na. And minus, eliminate natin yung second row, third column naman. And yung matitirang element ay yung minor niya. So yung first term and third term ay makakansel na because zero naman sila. And don't forget to multiply the whole equation by 5 kasi ito yung entry element natin. So, simplifying this, we will get 150 as our result. So, ito na yung determinant ng first term. So, let us get the determinant of the second term. Our reference here is the second row. So, let's start. Eliminate natin yung second row, first column. So, yung matitirang element ay yung magiging minor niya. Then plus, eliminate natin yung second row, second column naman. And yung matitirang elements ay yung magiging minor niya. Then minus, eliminate natin yung second row, third column. So yung matitirang elements ay yung magiging minor niya. As we can see, the second term and the third term are both multiplied by zero. Therefore, makakansel sila. And don't forget to multiply the whole equation by two. So, simplifying this, we will get negative 40. And that is the determinant ng second term. So, let us add our result. So, 150 plus negative 40 is equal to 110. And that is the value of our determinant. So, this is where our discussion ends. I hope you're not in the answer. And thank you for watching.